Hello, host Eric here, host Talking with Famous People, and I am here today with Mega Bro and host Taylor, and we are talking about a special kind of something called positive and negative extroverted intuition. And the reason I want to talk about it was because Margie was asking me a couple of questions in a comment thread. I think I answered them more or less right, but uh, it got me thinking more about positive and negative NE. Now, I know one kind of negative NE that's pretty straightforward for me as I think about it is I'm not interested in that because I didn't come up with that idea. Now, that's not a kind of negative NE that I tend to um, indulge in nearly as much now as I used to. But it used to, meaning not a super long time ago, was very, uh, tried to isolate myself in terms of concepts, strangely, and the notion that I didn't want to be influenced too much. But of course, that's insane, because we're not talking about, I can understand doing that with music or, or poetry or something like that, where you don't want to be influenced by another person's style, but it doesn't work that way with ideas. You're just hiding from the fact that other people have lots of other good ideas that you should include in your own thinking if you will, if you want to prioritize the thinking and not the originality necessarily. And in fact, the more you incorporate other people's thinking, the more original the amalgam of ideas you end up with is anyway. Look at this. This is this is a this is a heavy hitting room here. Where we we got Margie Megabro and host Taylor in the room. I got to be on my toes here. Okay, Margie, we were just talking about uh, our comment exchange, uh, and I was saying that negative NE, to me, represents a rejection of an idea because it's not my own. But I could think of another form of negative NE being uh, rejection of any uh, familiar course in favor of a new course. Uh, I wonder if, Megabro, do you see a distinction between those two things, or is that just quibbling over basically the same thing? Um, I'm not sure. I, I need to look more into it. Okay. Well, uh, Margie, you asked some question. I, I don't remember what it was about. I think it was about negative NE, right? Or was oh, it was about creativity. And... Margie's question was, would you say that negative charged functions would generally be contraindicated with creativity? In other words, that they'd run counter to creativity. And I would say, I said, or not, not in my case, and not necessarily, because to me, positive SI represents an alternative to creativity. But I had some additional thoughts about that, which is positive SI was the means by which my ex-wife would execute creativity. So she'd learned a technique called image transfer that required a certain delicate execution. And you'd get better at it over time, and it was not easy to do. And she'd execute that same technique on different images on different media. Now, so she's utilizing positive SI to be creative. For me, positive SI is the alternative to creativity. So it's watching TV instead of making more episodes of talking with famous people. It's, you know, choosing to go to bed instead of staying up all night tweaking out on something, you know? So, uh, it, the, to me, that shows how whether or not positive or negative relates to creativity is going to depend on the type and their relationship to the status quo. So the warm fuzzies we get from ice cream is what you, was the driving force in your wife's, in your wife at her best? No, I would say executing the same familiar technique over and over again, trying to get it better, trying to get better at it. But um, she, you know, it's like instead of I, we had this argument, right? She ha she learned this image transfer technique, and she also separately learned about this kind of special kind of paint called chalk paint that she used in her crafts, right? And she explained chalk paint to me, and so I'm like, well. Hell, Candace, let's get our own paint and put all kinds of different shit in it. We can have sand paint, we can have... And I, was, I threw out a bunch of different it's ideas, right? Purpose paint. It, it looks a little different than regular paint, I don't know. No. <laughs> I mean, whatever. The point is, it's got shit in it. That's the point. It's got chalk in it. I was like, well, let's put our own shit in paint, right? She hated that idea, 
and got mad at me as if I pursued it at all. Like I pushed it even a little bit. And she was like, well, I to do an image transfer onto a piece of wood or a canvas. And I said, well, let's try doing it on a brick and let's try doing it on this thing. And she'd get mad at me. She doesn't want to try those changes. She was exercising her creativity through a crafty mechanism rather than through a fine arts mechanism. And that, that resulted in her executing the same technique over and over again on different pictures that she didn't draw herself, right? She'd get like old ant- antique uh, public domain pictures and then she'd image transfer them onto a different How surface. How did you not stay married? How did that not work out for you guys? <laughs> well, see, I, I, I respected the hell out of what she would... Mocking her creativity. But the, this is the thing. It's not like that. I respected the hell out of what she was doing the only way I knew how. Like, yeah, let's play with these great, fun things you got. You got uh, that shit. I forget what all this shit's called. Gesso, that's what it's called. You got gesso. You got this other shit that you smear on it. And it is a cool technique. You can take, like, old pictures from magazines and pull the, the ink off of the paper. So you have to scrape the paper and the, only the ink is left behind. So it's a cool technique, you know? But the problem is she hated my way of playing with her at that, which was always to change it a little bit, right? She just hated that part. I, but I totally respected what she did. I totally supported what she did. I pushed her to do that shit. Whenever she said, like, I think I'd like to do this, I'm like, you should totally do that. She did not support me in return in my own creative endeavors, though. That's the thing. I feel your pain. Thank you, Taylor. I appreciate it. <laughs> I feel so uh, commiserated with um, <laughs> other thoughts on this matter of uh, I, I understand logically that you have pain there. <laughs> right yes yes right. that's called dry it, it's dry commiseration you see right. there's two there's two kinds of commiseration just like there's two charges there's two kinds of commiseration there's dry commiseration and wet commiseration we do dry commiseration that's all so do ISFPs strangely enough do they <laughs> do, yeah you're a uh, your ex-wife, uh, that image transfer, that mm-hmm. would be an example of a combination of both positive and negative SI. The negative SI aspect would be deciding to only use a certain technique and reject alternatives. Or and the tweaks, positive as I'd call them. <laughs> right. Rejecting that. <laughs> and the positive SI would be looking for the different pictures she could apply the technique to. So I would think negative SI would be the least creative of all the function charges. I see. Mega bro, are you making this up on the fly? <laughs> uh, I've actually done a lot of video classifying. I don't know if that's a yes or a no. Well, Taylor, uh, obviously you have you're not up to date on the most recent research. It turns out the best way to establish anything conclusively is through the process of video classification. And that sounds like a fancy phrase for YouTubing. <laughs> if you want to, hey, if you want to solve cold fusion, the key is through video classification. Now, the thing is, this is not like cold fusion, so it actually makes perfect sense. What he's saying is he's He's analyzed a whole shit ton of people behaving like human beings in the world, and he's classified all their behaviors in typical INTJ fashion. If, if you say you invent, it, if you say that you develop this theory on your own, that's not going to discredit it at all to me because someone has to come up with everything. Yeah, he came up with it. Okay, that's all he, I wanted to know. Yeah, he not just doesn't say that. All. He just doesn't just, say it because he's. But, but, but socionics, uh, socio, socionics also has uh, function charges. Uh, they, I didn't know about it, and so mine is a little bit different. Well, he, then take credit for that shit and don't let someone else stamp their name on it. Or else, but, next thing you know, Taylor Briggs is going to be the next best bursting out sociologist, psychologist. But these ideas don't work like that, Taylor. It's like, you know, I mean, the it's like. You're Tesla. You mix them together just like Socionics and, and MBTI is crossing. Yeah. It, it's what's happened is the. Uh, the Roundup resistant seed has entered into the wild ecosystem and has started to crossbreed with the seeds there, thereby destroying Monsanto's patent. So that's why Northern Lights won't ever be the same as it was when I was 15? It, it, it is, actually. I, I have found a Northern Lights, okay, but not when, probably when you were 15, yeah, because I was in college, I grew it, 
and it was by far better than all the other plants I had. I had one plant on Northern Lights, and I had a bunch of different other strains. This guy, I like, did went in with this other guy who showed me how to do it, and he took half the crop. I kept half the crop, and I did. I had it at okay. my house. I've got right. this like warm fuzzy SI ice cream memory of Northern Lights. <laughs> it's the best, it's like, man. It's kind of like chasing the dragon or something. <laughs> People but say, I, oh, I got it about two years ago, and I swear it was the same thing. I remembered it. It was the same thing. I was like, oh my god, that's it. That's Northern Lights. That is the same thing. So, but that's the only time I've seen it. One time at Medicare, back when the Medicare was open, they had it one time. And I got it, and it was fucking straight up Northern Lights. So it does still exist, but the seed banks are getting kind of hybrid-y, you know? Yeah. Anyway, that's off topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a lot of... There's a lot of OGs and there's a lot of diesels. Um, Speaking of negative NE... <laughs> sidetrack. <laughs> Let's hear yeah. it. Um, well, uh, well, it's normally just like all the negative uh, charges, negative feedback loops. Although it normally tries to prevent uh, things it doesn't want, it can go into the positive zone. An example of this would be like trying to do something ridiculous, trying to prove that something's ridiculous. Then say, hey, maybe I'll try this after all, even though we someone know. might think it's right, right. But um, it's like you transcend the mockery, and you just go with it. And like, for example, there is, I found a mule, po I found a mule polo video on YouTube. Oh, it exists already. Yeah. See, my yeah. negative NE is my negative NE is kicking in now. We gotta change it. We gotta change it, of course. So uh, that would yeah. be negative NE in the positive zone. Someone so thought of that ridiculous thing and said, "Hey, I'm not going to reject this idea." Hmm. Well, I, I may I may still return to my attachment to mule polo just because somebody else played mule polo doesn't mean they played it right. Okay. Hey, what was that? Uh, Super legit fancy term you use for YouTubing? Uh, okay. Video classification? That's it. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta save it for later. <laughs> the better, if you want to be more fancy, you say it's uh, um, discursive, and discursive investigation through video. <laughs> uh, okay, so anyway. Discursive that, means that's discourse. That's descriptive of a word. It 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 betrays what it really is. Oh, it says it says what it actually is too much. I see. Well, that is a problem sometimes. Um, okay. So as far as negative any goes, my first thought: I wish somehow if we could get a pool that was very shallow, we could play water, real water polo. <laughs> No, see, that would... asked me who was the four-time running Boy Scout camp water polo champion. Uh, let me guess. Is it Katie? Wasn't Katie? Hmm. Was Other it Taylor? Boy Scout camp. Was it Taylor? Maybe. It was Taylor. Guess well, who congr... was really good at pretending that he was under four feet tall when he was not. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you got into that water polo league, or what? I was like five. Seven, the last year. Yeah. <laughs> well, I see. Well, they, they divided it by height. If anyone was following. I see. Yeah, I got that part. Um, yeah. Well, I've never been. It. I've never been a champion of any sporting type of thing that I can recall. But uh, I plan to be champion of mule water polo. Now the thing is, we can't actually make the mule swim. So I'm thinking maybe if we do it like in a big ball pit or something. <laughs> it's just to provide more viscosity for the mules. <laughs> I have this weird kind of... I don't like walking through things that I can't see into. Hmm. And that doesn't sound fun if you put mules in the mix. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a bunch of angry mules. <laughs> also, I want to make sure the mules are happy. I don't want to have angry mules. <laughs> I don't want the mules to be uncomfortable. I care about the mules. You've got to get your any under control and realize that they're probably going to be pretty upset when they go under. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> All right, well, I'll, I'll think about it some more. We'll figure out some sort of sporting event. It may not be Mule Polo. It may be regular Mule Polo. It, I don't know. We'll have to see. Well, maybe I can think of some other sports to combine with horseback riding besides croquet Maybe we soccer. Maybe we can change animals altogether. Get rid of the animal? Okay. No, get rid of the mules. Get rid of the mules. A different kind of animal. There's Should a be... weird kind of giraffe-zebra hybrid looking thing in Africa. Oh, falconing contest. <laughs> falconing. That's we... a old school badass. <laughs> we need a falconing contest. We'll go someplace where there are some naturally occurring songbirds, and we'll bring birds, hooded birds of prey with us. <laughs> Only kids from the 1100s will remember that. <laughs> and we'll see who's falconing champion. Now, well, Mega Bro, do you think, how do you like your chances in the falconing championship? Oh, man. We need video analysis on falconing and how it's executed. So that when we get there and get our first falcon, we can dive right into it. We don't have to practice or nothing. Right. We'll have to watch some YouTube videos, in other words, on falconing. Okay. Well, let, I tell you what. Let's do falconing, but let's not use falcon. Let's use regular birds. Let's use pigeons or, we or something. Falconing with donkeys. <laughs> Mule falconing. Mule falconing. Everybody strap some mule to their wrists. I'm not concerned with the details of it. We can work that shit out later. <laughs> well, yeah, okay, basically, when you, you, you put the mules in cattle in, in, in catapults, and when you see a rabbit, you shoot the mule with the rabbit. But we could put a ball pit where the rabbit is so that they land in soft shit. Right! It'll be totally humane. Then they're just pissed off and maimed at the bottom of the ball pit. And then people have to walk through it. The loser has to walk through it. Walk through walk through the mules and their death thrashings. With their kicks and their bites. Go! Give the mules justice! You are martyrdom. Give these mules justice. Walk through their death thrashings. If you fuck up the game... And the mule, you gotta walk through the mule. You fucked up. Right. Shoot them, shoot them softly. <laughs> Try to land them on their feet. <laughs> okay, well we're not gonna do mule catapulting. Okay, that's out. That's out of the question. Nothing's inhumane to mules. All right, so. I think this covers the topic of positive and negative NE. Can you end the video right there and just do that?